You know, one of the things that I've got to explain to you is that there's no accident that the fishing is so good here in Port de Lucie. The St. Catharines Game and Fish has a lot to do with it. Um, in conjunction with working with the Ministry of Natural Resources. And I've got Doug Goucher with me, who's the president of the association. Doug, can you tell us a little bit about the process of how you actually get the fish, whether they're salmon, rainbows, or brown trout, so that there's so many fish to catch out here? Okay. Um, well, we have nothing to do with the stocking of browns and rainbows. Mm -hmm. That's the ministry. Uh, Jerry Mitrovich, yes, our past president. Yes, he uh, goes to Ringwood. He helps them collect the eggs and surface all the fish, mm -hmm. and the fry are brought down here. We have uh, two pens now Good. for raising the salmon. Now, is there a cost for this work? Whether it's getting the eggs and, and uh, um, getting the salmon or the brown trout. Is there a cost to the association? How does that work? Uh, the cost is not for us. The right. cost with us is uh, the uh, salmon right. themselves. The jury has them in the pens. Right. And we have to pay for the feeding and, you know, and it's all, all in donations. Right, right. Right? Well, I think you're doing a great job, Doug. So well, I hope you continue it because I don't live too far and I come down here and enjoy the fishing too. Right. And one thing that I'd like to encourage you, if you like to fish, especially if you're in southern Ontario, the St. Catharines Game and Fish does a great job, but they actually need the help from sportsmen. So I haven't asked for donations before on the show, and this isn't for Canadian sport fishing, it's for the St. Catharines Game and Fish. It's a really good organization, whether you want to become involved in it or even donate some funds that'll make the fishing even better here. You know, when you're fishing around the GTA in Ontario, especially on Lake Ontario, there's not a lot of places that can facilitate so many anglers and still have really good fishing. So this is very nice, because I see guys all the way down this wall catching fish. This is a nice brown again. And uh, I'm trying to keep it off the rocks. While I'm fighting this fish, we'll see if Aldo can hook another one on. Now you'll notice that I've got the same net with me that I use in the boat. This is that Lucky Strike basket live release net. It's a really handy net to use when you're fishing for trout. And the, the long handle is ideal here because, of course, we've got a fast drop off. I don't have waders on. This fish has a lot of spunk. Come on back. Now you'll notice I'm penduling the fish in and I haven't reeled the line in too, too much. I actually have more line in than the length of the rod. And this is a seven uh, foot, two piece trout rod. And I'll explain that to you in just a moment. There's a nice male brown again, and you can see that spawn sack just in the edge of the mouth. I'm just gonna pull it out. Now what I did there, because I saw Ray had one on, I put a little corky drifter on there. So let me just get my line out from the rocks here. Look, I don't get stuck way out in the middle, but I got here. Okay, so this little thing here, this yellow thing, is actually made out of cork. It's called a little corky. So it acts as an attractor, but it also acts to keep your spawn sack up off the bottom. So you can see this brown is probably about, I'm guessing five pounds, and he's hooked perfectly just on the edge of the mouth. So he grabbed that spawn sack as it was swinging through the current. So I'm just gonna lay him down and take that hook out. You know, these little hooks are small, but they catch really well, okay? So there we go. If you hear that grinding, it's a chain that I've got on there. It actually works well. So I'm gonna suspend him in the water just for a second, he's got lots of energy, so he should take off, look at this, he wants to go. Nice male. Cindy, if you're gonna be on the water, does it make sense to actually wear a life jacket? Absolutely, Italo, and by law, you're required to have a properly fitted personal flotation device or life jacket for every individual that is on your boat. And it's a really good idea to, uh, when you're choosing a life jacket or personal flotation device, that you choose one that will actually turn you over so you're floating face up in the water, and um, it will actually keep your head and face out of the water. That makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. 